What's up guys, CP Monty here back with another video. When it comes to PC gaming or building a desktop PC, a lot of us just throw our systems on high performance mode and call it a day. But does high performance mode make any difference or are we just wasting our time on our computers when we could be using that time to play games or do something else or find different ways to increase our gaming performance? Now on laptops, this makes obvious differences due to laptops and portable devices having much lower TDP processors and ability to take advantage of those lower power states, being them mobile parts. But desktops are different. We've got full high-end clock speeds, we've got crazy clock speeds. I mean, look at the latest generation from both Intel and AMD hitting well over five gigahertz. There's definitely a lot we can do on the desktop side. So does power actually make any difference? Or again, are we just really wasting our time? Now at this point, I'm not really convinced that power modes actually do that much. Don't get me wrong, I set my desktops to high performance mode, but really, I don't really think there's actually that much of a difference that's going to be happening here. Mainly again because we have full desktop components and really they shouldn't be limited too much by the software and really it's just at the end of the day a little toggle on the screen. How much of a difference could it actually make? But with that, let's actually go ahead and find out how much a difference it actually makes. So I took my desktop which is arguably not the latest generation and not the latest specs but still works nevertheless and ran my tests. I ran GTA 5, Sleeping Dogs and Dirt Rally as a big sort of a general kind of test from a little bit older games to fairly new and relatively decent games and also to run them in power saver mode, balance mode and obviously high performance mode. Compared them between the two using ultra settings, maximum settings or whatever the highest options is in the game in terms of presets and use the built in benchmarks. As I do have a multi-monitor setup with mine, I also do open up Task Manager and MSI Afterburner on one monitor, so I could also do keep an eye on what the system was doing. Now in terms of specifications wise, my system is a fairly high-end system, even though it is a little bit on the older side. With 6 core 12 thread 2011 CPU with 120 watt plus TDP, the CPU is pretty powerful and pretty power hungry. In terms of video cards, I do have GTX 660s, although they weren't running in SLI for this particular test, just to keep things fair and even and things actually working properly. But all clock speeds were all set to stock speeds just again so we could go ahead and see what would happen if you've just thrown together a system and trying to run different power modes out of the box. So with that, let's take a look at our benchmarks results. And honestly, I'm super surprised by these results. Taking a look at the actual FPS that we get, the power saver mode actually shows a lack in performance compared to balanced and also to high performance mode. I was really surprised to see just how much of a performance difference we get when we're using power saver mode versus high performance or even balanced mode. Now if we go ahead and take a look at the speed differences, when I was running it on power saver mode I wasn't able to actually get anything more than 1.7 gigahertz speed on the CPU which was definitely a major bottleneck when I was on power saver mode. Once I did switch it up to balanced I did find myself running decent clock speeds and again once we got the high performance mode we got ourselves the max boost speeds and because my system is well cooled and well powered, I was able to actually exceed the clock speeds just sort of through the automatic boostness that Windows actually allows you to do, or rather Intel allows you to do, and I actually managed to get really decent performance. Now this was sort of replicated on the video card side, whilst I didn't actually notice any clock speed changes between run to run, I did notice for some reason the power limit on the GPUs were locked at 100% on power saver mode, whereas when I actually went ahead and put it on balanced and high performance, I did notice from time to time the actual power usage of the card bouncing over that 100% limit, which is totally fine for video cards to do, but I just found it odd that it wasn't too much of a difference here, but it did manage to result in a few FPS lost, which was really, really bad. Now, it's just coming back to that power saver mode, 1.7 gigahertz is really, really low, and a lot of modern games will actually suffer quite a lot from only having 1.7 gigahertz to actually play with. Even though it's a six core, 12 thread system, six cores and 12 threads isn't really gonna be taken advantage of, when we need to actually have a single thread performance. So the fact that we actually lost out speed thanks to power save mode was really, really big problem. Now, at first I did think this sort of 1.7 gigahertz limit was my problem. I might've accidentally set something a while ago. So I went ahead and reset to default all the power settings, ran the numbers once again and found basically identical results. Surprisingly enough, it is actually within Windows to actually limit your system when you are in power save mode, which is, I guess, not that surprising seeing that it's trying to 
save some power. Now this was also to report it across all the tests I did. Now whilst I didn't actually run numbers for Adobe Premiere Pro or After Effects, I did actually notice a significant loss in performance when I was on power save mode versus high performance mode, especially in Adobe Premiere where I was working with 4K footage, things just lagged out and was a really bad experience. Again, whilst I can't exactly benchmark timeline scrubbing performance because literally it's just moving the mouse left to right and seeing how smooth the video is, uh, I can definitely say it was a very noticeable difference, again, going from power saver to high performance. So does power modes actually make a difference within Windows? Absolutely yes, in fact they make so much of a difference there's actually a high chance you would feel the difference going between high performance and power saver in some games. Balanced is okay to run, however high performance is generally the way to go if you want to get full clock speeds and full performance out of your entire system. Again, balanced is one of those things where it kind of takes the best worlds of high performance and sort of mushes it with the low powerness of low power mode, but at the end of the day, the best thing to do is just run it in high performance mode. Personally, I wasn't expecting this much of a change as I'm literally just pushing a button on the screen. How much of a difference could it make? Well, actually it made quite a bit of difference. So whether you're on a laptop or a desktop, if you're gonna be doing anything that requires any sort of performance out of your system, set it to high performance mode and you should be having a really good time. Once again, I'm personally really surprised, but let me know what you think down in that comment sections. Were you surprised to see this kind of numbers up to 10 FPS difference? going from power saver to high performance mode. Personally, I wasn't, but let me know what you think down below. Otherwise, guys, if you have any suggestions, maybe you want to see these tests run on different systems and stuff like that again, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.